Hi, I'm David Robertson, and this is another one of my educational blacksmithing videos. Today I will be talking about thermal cycling, and this is in relationship to tool steel, and in this case a cold chisel. And it's made out of coil car spring, or 5160. That's the spring I'll be using. It's actually out of a GM truck. And I'll be cutting a series of pieces off, two pieces, and I slice right through the diameter to create two pieces. And we'll see that in just a moment. And then I'll forge out the chisel and do thermal cycling on one and just regular heat treating on another. And we'll see how they compare in a brake test. So here I'm just cutting the pieces off. I'm using a cutoff wheel on my angle grinder. It's the fastest, easiest way of getting through tough steel like 5160. I wouldn't use this in my bandsaw because it would take the teeth off very quickly. And I haven't shortened the clip at all in this, so it takes only a few moments to actually cut through this piece. Uh, the coil is actually about oh, three quarters of an inch in diameter, um, the rod. And then the actual car spring is about six or eight inches in diameter. And I've just clamped it in the vise and again using the angle iron with cut off the oak to cut the piece. Always wear safety glasses, you can see it's throwing tons of sparks. And there's the other piece and I'll just break it off. So now I place both of them in the forge at the same time and I take them up to quite a high temperature to straighten them. I'm using the Pritchell hole right now for bending it straight and then hammering it straight after that. Now you should be aware with the camera that I use the incandescent colors of the steel are actually brighter than what I see. So whereas you're seeing a white, I'm seeing a bright yellow. And a lot of these temperatures you're going to have to scale back a little bit for the proper coloring uh, for the temperatures when you work with the steel. And again, straightening the second piece. And I'll turn it around and I do the same on the other end. Um, essentially making a working tool out of it so I want it as straight as possible. And then I'll start forging on the, the actual blade portion of it. So the blade of a cold chisel is much like a flat screwdriver. So I'm making it an even taper in one direction, but I'm keeping the edges parallel with the original bar and essentially wedging out the tip. It's not a complicated forging process at all. And you can see I'm bringing the hammer down at an angle and I'm also lifting up the back end of the chisel. I'm sure many of you have made chisels before not that complicated. Mostly what I want to talk about is what happens with the steel. So I work on both of them and try and stress them the same. The whole idea here is to create a comparison between the two pieces of steel that were originally cut from the one piece. So it's as fair a comparison as you can easily do in a blacksmith shop. Again, just wedged out to the tapering point. Okay, so this is the thermocycling process. And as I said, the colors are going to be brighter than what I actually used. So the colors you want to use for 5160 
is to heat it up to a medium orange and let it air cool and then you heat it up a second time to a dull orange and let it air cool you heat it up a third time to a medium red and then bury it in vermiculite to slow cool after that now the other chisel I will heat up to a medium orange and bury directly in the vermiculite and you'll see that in a minute or two the idea behind the thermal cycling is that when we heat the steel up the grain growth can become quite large and the larger the grain structure is in the steel the more likely it is to fracture the weaker it actually is so if you can have a really tight grain growth really small crystalline structure then your tool will be a lot stronger now on a cold chisel it's not a huge issue it's a pretty sturdy item but when you start making knives and things like that this can be quite critical so just after this I will have heated it up to a medium red and I gently bury it in the vermiculite vermiculite is an insulator and it's non-combustible you can get it at most plant stores and this one is heated up to a medium orange color not the bright white that you see there and it is also put into the vermiculite and allowed to slow cool to room temperature now that's done off screen you'd just be looking at the bucket for a while and what I'm doing now is I'm heat treating the chisel so I've heated it up again just past the magnetic point you saw me touching it with the magnet and then as soon as the magnet just begins to pull back into the water and I quench down the tip which is about an inch long and you saw I was moving it up and down in the bucket so I blur the transition of the quench line and then I scrubbed it with a broken grindstone and now I'm watching the temper colors come up and I'll point to that's the blue line you can just barely see it in the video there will be a photo at the end of the the video that you can take a look at for the temper colors but the blue line should be about half an inch back from the edge and it's a straw color a dark straw color you want on the edge of a cold chisel or a working tool now the brake test I've had to notch it and you see it's bent already I've done some hammering on it it's incredibly tough steel so I had to notch it to get it to break and I'm using a four pound hammer to work it into the swage block and it finally broke that's the coarse grain one I had to notch this one as well and this is the fine grain one or the one that has been thermal cycled and I have to do a lot more hammering on it to get it to break the nice thing to know is this is really good steel it's tough steel to work in, but it will make a very durable tool for you and it holds an edge reasonably well um, and you can make springs out of it obviously or cutting tools impact tools it's a good all-round blacksmithing tool steel and there you, you see it's finally broken this is the first piece that broke and you can see the coarse grain structure um, it's hard to get a good photograph of it but I think you can see it in the video the next one is the fine grain structure and you can see the difference in the coloring and how it broke um, much different much stronger um, much more durable tool and it's just through this thermal cycling everything else was the same in this picture you can see the colors on the tip and they're called the temper colors for more information about tool making and blacksmithing in general, please visit my website artistblacksmith.com and you're welcome to sign up for my free monthly newsletter and it has lots of tips and techniques that may interest you. Thank you very much and we'll talk to you again.